Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part six of my How to Code PHP tutorial. Today, I'm going to show you a sample login script that is complete and would be usable on your own websites. I don't know about you, but I learn better by looking at actual code and having it described to me, and that's why I put the tutorial together the way that I did. Here I'm going to show you how to code a PHP login script. I hope this works in helping you better understand PHP. Definitely watch my other PHP tutorial from the beginning before trying to watch this video or you may be very confused. Here we're telling the browser that we're going to serve up some PHP code with the PHP opening brace. The first function I call, ob underscore start, turns output buffering on. To keep it simple, this function allows you to send messages to the server with less restrictions. I'm using it here to make session calls, but you could use it to send a string to the server and other such things. If you want more on this, leave a comment below. Since this script is going to be registering new users and allowing the user to log in, I need to create a new session, and that is what this function does. This line of code opens a connection with the database. The require once is used to call code directly into a page so that the page contains only HTML code. We do this to keep the page all nice and tidy. Obviously, to make my job easier, I'm writing all of the JavaScript and PHP on the page directly for presentation reasons. You should, however, use the require once function instead. Here we're creating constants in PHP. This is also a listing of the information required to connect to a database. You need to supply in this script the user ID, password, host, address of your database, and finally the database name. You want the config.inc.php file to be stored in a directory outside of your root folder so it can't be accessed by anyone other than you, unless you want a hacker to have your database password edited. MySQL Connect connects to the database if you provided the right information and then stores a reference to the database in the variable dbc. Here the PHP code is checking if the database name supplied exists. If it doesn't, an error is triggered and a warning message is sent to the browser. Then the exit function terminates the PHP script and the if statement block is closed with a closing curly brace. If it couldn't connect to the MySQL database, we print an error message on the screen and exit from the PHP script like before. The function ini underscore get checks to see if magic quotes are activated on the PHP server. Magic quotes automatically escape out quote marks entered in your PHP code. As you can see, the PHP interpreter wouldn't know which double quote closed the string and would throw an error. You could escape out a double quote with a backslash like this. The function strip slashes does just that. It deletes the slashes that the magic quotes function adds. Here we're providing security from people sending potential damaging queries to our database. First, we're checking that the function MySQL real escape string is available. If it is, we run it on the form data. We use the trim function to eliminate white space from the beginning and end of the string. Then we return the data and close the PHP script with the closing brace. Here you can see the beginning of a normal HTML page. If you saw my HTML tutorial or learned HTML on your own, I'm sure you understand what all this means. Here we're checking if we have session data set for the current visitor. If we do, we greet them by printing their first name to the screen. I've included an image that represents what this box might look like. In this block of code, we're checking if the user ID variable has been set in a previous visit. We're also checking that the visitor is not currently on the logout.php page. If both of these checks come back true, then we place the link to the logout page. We follow that up by placing a link to the change password page. I finish off this block of code by providing links if the person isn't logged into their account and have no session data saved. I print the register, login, and forgot password links to the page, and finally close the diff. Well, thanks for watching part 6 of my How to Code PHP tutorial. In part 7, I will give you all the code behind creating a new user registration script. Till next time.